Now, we had this one a couple of weeks ago, about three or four weeks back, and it was actually quite popular because we covered a whole lot of different things. And it was all about um, good old failed franchises, things that uh, where the movie or the TV show was really successful, but the collectible sucked. The big one. So uh, what do you reckon, um, Mr. Aaron, where are we leading to tonight? Um, we're looking now at Tron. The interesting thing about Tron is I remember when this came out as it being huge and a big success. Um, as an adult, looking back on it and being into merchandise and, and toys and stuff, I didn't realise that it wasn't a big success and it was a big disappointment for Disney. Do you remember when Tron came out, Dags? Absolutely. I saw it in the cinema and absolutely loved it. But I don't recall ever seeing merchandise for it. It was like it just wasn't around at all. Well, one of the things that was more popular with Tron, because Tron was based on, you know, computing systems and all fought inside a computer, it, of course, uh, translates very well mm. into computer games. This is the original Tron Upright. We have looked at this in more detail in our gaming um, episode. But this was a good game. I remember um, playing it once or twice, and that's unusual because it wasn't generally released in Australia. I remember playing um, the disc of Tron when it came out and all, all things in the box, as we saw in the picture, looked absolutely spectacular. The gameplay itself, probably not so flash, but just visually, it was absolutely stunning. I mean, when you look at items like this, you go, you know what, they just look great. Well, that's the thing about Tron. I think when you have something that looks visually amazing and then the product doesn't match up to it, it's it's more of a disappointment. If Because if, if the box art looked crap and then the game was crap, you're like, okay. If the box art looks amazing and then the game's crap, you feel lied to <laughs> by the box art, which is good advertising, but ultimately not the best way for your product to be perceived. And again, Tron was uh, released by Disney. They had high hopes that it would be uh, a series of movies it would do amazingly in the merchandise section. Um, they didn't get a lot of franchise um, people to take on the, the license beyond gaming because I guess they showed people the movie and at the time maybe it was a bit too avant-garde or a bit too confusing and people were going, oh, what, what the hell is happening in this uh, as well, where the kids will get it, but the people who make decisions about merchandising might not have. Ultimately, that was probably a good decision because it didn't sell very well. And Tron merchandise is, is kind of um, one of those things that sort of fondly remembered but didn't do well at the time. And there was a lot of merchandise produced. You can see there, there was everything from action figures and soundtracks and trading cards uh, right down to, uh, I hadn't seen that before, the, the Tron beach towel. So they really did try and merchandise absolutely everything for the movie like um, Hollywood does tend to do. But Tron just um, didn't do well and kind of um, left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. And it took a long time for it to turn over where Disney were thinking it's a sort of a failure as a movie where we're going to have another attempt because the generation that grew up with it is now fondly remembering it. Um, maybe there's a possibility that it, Tron merchandise, one of the problems with it is it didn't look like it did in the movie because in the movie, obviously, it's got a very different colour scheme. You've got the glowy bits and all the rest of it. And as we saw just then, like, if you look at the action figure up here, it looks nothing like as it does in the film. And maybe that had something to do with it because it's not like like for like, if that makes sense, and, and the light cycles and all the rest of it. Um, now, if they were remade in a modern sense, they can probably get around that particular problem. But, of course, the movie was like four decades ago. But uh, I think that may have had something to do with it. But either way, regardless of whether you love the movie or didn't love it, but, I mean, a lot of us did, uh, it just died in the ass big time. So uh, then they brought the sequel out. Well, what you were saying uh, really applies to the sequel because they could come back and then they could make things that were more movie accurate and look like um, they did in the movie a lot more than the original. And you'd think maybe that that would make the merchandise sell better. Now, Disney thought Tron Legacy was going to be a massive movie for them. And in some respects, I don't understand why it didn't do as well as I thought it would because I thought it was a great sequel and a great update of Tron. Now, what you were saying with the criticism with the original toys, I think is totally avoided with this movie where they went and took all the main characters and they um, made them as movie accurate as they can. And then they said, what makes Tron popular? And it was, I guess, the light up and uh, being inside a game. So they put the sound in it where they talk and they also had light up hologram faces, which was a first in a toy and I thought was fantastic. I saw the Tron display at Kmart and um, Meyer, and it was huge. It was obviously primed to be one of the best-selling lines of the year. And you'd go back two weeks later and not a single item had sold. And I am not sure why that was. Um, 
maybe kids didn't have the nostalgia for the original that adults did and I could appreciate the toys as an adult and for kids they were just uh, just black and white toys kind of thing from a movie that they didn't really care about. Um, they made the same mistake as I think what Star Trek did when we talked about it. They released three different scales of toys at the same time. So you could have the 12 inch dolls and then the eight inch figures and then the three and a quarter ones. And when you do that, it makes it harder for collectors to decide on what they want. And the other thing that I think was a major mistake and a few adult collectors I know just refused to collect the line because of it. They didn't make a core of figure, which was Olivia Wilde's figure. And she was heavily promoted through all the advertising on all the posters and it's one of those things that at the time toy manufacturers thought boys just didn't buy female figures and by not doing that i think they lost the adult market as well as the kid market the only thing i can think is maybe olivia wilde had a special deal or something like that where she she didn't have figures of her which does happen occasionally but i can't imagine that would be the yeah. the reason it just seems bizarre to me um, so I think Cora would have been a very popular character. Would it have saved the line? Probably not. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You could sit and do a really good psychological study as to saying to someone, why, why would you buy this range versus that range, even if that range that we're talking about, and look at these pictures here, look really, really cool, really, really grouse. And I agree with you that why they didn't do Cora is just like a, like doesn't add up at all. It was one of those things that was really merchandised hard and a lot of um, retailers put a lot of work into advertising it and trying to sell it and it just didn't sell. And so the figures didn't sell. You can see I've, a couple of times I've put displays up there in the lines of figures and Disney really pushed it and it just didn't work. It was all over the magazines. It was on the covers of magazines. There was posters everywhere. There was comic book run. There was a lot of anticipation for it where the pre build up merchandise for it sold. Tron um, did well with crossover games on the original movie because it was one of the things that did sell, so the Atari cartridges. So you would think a no-brainer when they released this movie that the game would be incre incredibly popular, but um, it just didn't capture the imagination of people. Um, so Grant has made a mention about you can get items in Malaysia, and as we said, the production of the item is not the question. The question is how much of it sells. I mean, you can produce as much as you want, but if no one's buying it, then it's sort of pointless. Now, there was one area of Tron that actually did sell amazingly well and probably um, probably saved face a little bit, and that was the soundtrack. Mm. Now, Tron Legacy soundtrack is absolutely amazing, and I think a testament to that is though the movie has gone, the soundtrack for Tron Legacy is used on so many different trailers and shows for, for science fiction because it has become almost instantly recognisable as something futuristic and cool. And I still think that uh, that year they were robbed, not even getting a nomination for that soundtrack at the Academy Award because if you were looking at what makes the soundtrack great, Tron Legacy ticks all the boxes. Yeah, having Daft Punk do the music, I think it was an ingenious move. Um, and even the two guys even feature in the film itself. And yeah. if anything was going to sell, as you said, the soundtrack would be it. And I think it's mainly because of them. If it was some obscure guys that no one had ever heard of, probably not as well, regardless of how good the music was. But I think having their name attached to it was definitely a winner. Yeah. So it wasn't a total failure. But um, looking at Tron and Tron Legacy, it was one of those I think deserved to do better than it did. But circumstances and um, just the timing were, were wrong. So a lot of it ended up in landfill. Oh!